I'm going to show you today a very easy, quick Thai uh, garbanzo bean curry. I want to show you how I'm chopping these onions because I'm going to make this a bit of a cooking class. And that is that, sorry, I forgot my knife. Silly me. All right. I started with a whole onion, cut it down from stem to root, already peeled it and cut one half of it. But I wanna show you a handy gadget. You don't have to use this, but it's handy because I wanna do the bell pepper that I'm gonna use in such a way that it's it gives me a rather consistent look in the dish and um, in a nice dice. And this is a quick way of doing it. This is called the Vidalia uh, Chop Wizard, and it has a cutting blade. There are three of them, actually. One is great for mushrooms. It slices them. The other is for a fine dice. But I count it. Sorry for the noise. I'm going to do this one more time. Here's another one of those slices. And I hit it hard. Take this off. And you can see that I have a very nice dice here. I just happen to really like the way this performs. And so I use it, especially if I'm doing several things in a dish that I want a consistent dice. I have a zucchini cheddar soup. Look for that. Go to my website, namsimmonson.com. Look for the um, zucchini cheddar soup. And I love those ingredients to be uh, diced evenly because it looks really cool in this very, well, rather thick orange because of carrot in it, uh, soup that um, tastes just like zucchini in a cheddar sauce. And I don't eat dairy, so that's not what's happening. All right. I'm going to now do the bell pepper. And what I've done is I've put the onion into a hot pan. I'm sauteing it. Can you see how it's browning? There's not a drop of oil in there because that's the other thing I don't do. I don't add oil to my food. Doesn't mean I don't have fat. I have plenty of that from, well, for example, the cashews I'm gonna put over this dish and from tahini that I put in my hummus, and from nut butters that I love. There's another um, uh, garbanzo bean stew. It's called African uh, Peanut Stew. You'll see that in my website. And you can click to the cooking show. It takes you right to YouTube where you can watch it as a video. And that has peanut butter and peanuts sprinkled over it. So it's not a matter of being fat phobic. It's a matter of my wanting to eat foods as close to nature as possible. And our added oils, which don't do anything for us nutritionally, simply add a lot of empty calories. Uh, I'd rather eat those calories rather than drink them. So this is browning beautifully. And I'm gonna add the bell pepper I keep a bag in the freezer where I keep all these bits and pieces of vegetables, the stems, long stems from my cilantro when I want a nice chop to use it to sprinkle over a dish, the bottoms of asparagus, the... Um, Gosh, stem ends of green beans, those hard little wiry things that you don't want to chew on. Um, and all of my spare scraps, and I have a video on that too, homemade broth, take a look at it, uh, go into that. And then when the bag is full, I have a full bag in the freezer right now actually, I could show you, but I think I'm just going to stay on task. You'll see in some of my videos, I'm running all over the place, uh, but I'll stay on task today. This is going to be our dinner tonight. Kim will be home, gosh, in about 
I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. And this dish literally takes maybe 15 to throw together. Although I kind of like to keep it low and let those flavors marry a bit. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. And when I finish with this, you'll see why I like it. It's about $20 on Amazon or Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, it might be a little more if you get the one that has the fine, you know, what does it have? Maybe that's the one with the mushroom slicer. And I liked that, so I got that one. It may have been a few dollars more. Okay, so I'm done with this. And this one also has, this has a, um, oh, this holds the vegetables still so that they don't slide around. And this little grid catcher pulls the food out of that, even though it's easy enough to get out because it has a, a comb that comes with it. I have no affiliation to this. I just happen to like it and use it a lot. But see what I like about this is that I have these nice even um, bits that you'll see when the finished product is done. It just looks nice. And I, I'm not a, I was gonna say I'm not a great slicer. That's not so. I just don't have the skills and the speed that a lot of commercial chefs have to get a beautiful dice like that on my own. My son Eric does. I watch him do an onion and he does it in this, well, very quick with his Japanese knife. Um, he's quite a chef and I just don't have those skills. Okay, so I'm softening the vegetables. So far, this is simply um, the red onion, I'm sorry, white onion, and I could have used a red onion in here. Red onion has more nourishment than the white onion, but I wanted to keep the color soft. The red onion will simply, will, will darken it just a bit. And I'm softening the vegetables, and then I'm gonna add the flavoring. I'm gonna give it just a minute more. And then I'm going to add three tablespoons of garlic. So I peel my garlic and chop it all at once. I have a nifty device for that too. You'll see that in some of my videos. It's a Tupperware mini chopper that works really well. In one of the last videos, I chopped 15 big uh, cloves of garlic, like in zip, 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 and it was done. Um, and I also like, you'll find these measuring spoons on Amazon. I saw a chef in a cooking show use this and I thought, oh, does that ever make sense? Because I couldn't get one of these measuring spoons into this and how would I pour the garlic out without getting it all over? So one tablespoon is three cloves of garlic and that's what this that's what I'm aiming for. Did you see I cheated because I like garlic. I added a little bit more. And so I keep these ch cloves chopped up so I can make a meal rather quickly. And did you, I didn't explain to you what I was doing a minute ago when I said I keep all of my, the vegetables, uh, scraps in the freezer and then I turn them into broth. Well, this is my broth. I just bought a water, a, um, uh, one quart bottle and I keep it in the refrigerator like that and this is how I use it. And then when I make the broth, I can have two or three additional, almost quart size containers to put out in the freezer, defrost them and put them in here. Okay, so I've got my garlic sauteing. I'm gonna to add to that another ingredient that you will find in the Asian sections of most markets, it's at Ralph's, it's at Vaughn's, um, not at Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's, but they don't have it there. Uh, this one is, I can get from Sprouts, well, from a number of places. My local um, Clark's uh, Nutritional Center, which is a market that has a lot of good brands. And I'm looking at this for two tablespoons, and I'm gonna use that same tablespoon I don't worry about the little bit of garlic that's on the back end of it. And this is called green curry paste. This is where we're getting most of the flavor in this dish. All right. And if you look at the ingredients, because I like food as close to nature as possible, if you look at the ingredients, it's 
green chili peppers, garlic, lemongrass, which I actually grow, um, spices, salt, shallots, and some lime peel. It's very Thai smelling. Well, I went to my garden and I have, I grow Thai basil. I'm in Southern California, so we don't get frosts and I can grow things like Thai basil, which is much more woody than our conventional basil that, um, that soft basil that you would put in a tomato salad. If that gets cold, it just turns brown. This is a little bit more hardy, but it won't take a freeze. And so I, I just picked a little bit of my Thai basil. You don't have to do this. You could add red, regular basil or do without. But I'm making this um, well with the things that I have around. And another thing that I have is I have, I grew and I keep it small just like my bay laurel I keep very small because I like going out and picking bay leaves and bay laurel is a bush you can buy a tree you can buy but don't let it get to tree size unless you want a 40 by 40 foot tree so I keep mine as a small shrub well same thing with this this is a kefir k-e-f-i-r lime tree and I keep it tiny and it has mean thorns so I keep it small keep it tiny but the leaves are very, very indicative of a Thai flavor. Oh, there it, it's almost indescribable, indescribable there. It's limey, but there's something more that you taste when you go to a Thai restaurant. So I picked one of those and threw it in. And do you need this? Absolutely not. All right. And then I'm gonna add a little bit, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of chili pepper, you know, just crushed pepper. And do you have to have that? No, you may not like something to have that kind of heat to it. All right, then I'm gonna put in, and I wanted to show you some fun measuring cups. My son recommended these to me. They are silicone and they have a waffle outside um, design so that I could put boiling water in here, and I do. When I make, and you'll see this on my website and on my um, channel, when I make my Instant Pot oat groats, I love oat groats, have them in the morning instead of rolled oats. Um, I even have half oat groats and half brown rice that I'm gonna be serving with this just because I happen to have a little of both left and so I mix them in. Uh, so I don't need something that's heat proof for this, but this is a four cup measure and I needed three cups of garbanzo beans. Let me tell you about that. The recipe calls for, and you'll see on the recipe, um, which you will find on my website under recipes, nansimmonson.com. It calls for two 15 ounce cans. If you drain a 15 ounce can of beans, almost all the beans will give you about a cup and a half. So two of them is gonna give you three cups. Well, I didn't use canned beans for this. I make, and I've got a, a video on that too, I make a couple of pounds of garbanzo beans at once. They're dry, I put water, I, I soak them in water and cook them in the Instant Pot and then drain them, put them into one quart Ziploc freezer bags. And this was one of my bags. The, a quart is actually four cups, but um, I had one that I'd already taken some out for my daily salads and um, there was three cups left. It's a little bit more, but it doesn't matter because if I'm a little short on broth, I'll just throw in more coconut milk, uh, which is the moisture here that uh, I'm not using broth for this recipe. I'm using coconut milk and it's not the coconut milk that you buy in the can, the much more rich one with a, a lot more calories. I still use that in my African uh, stew. I use that canned coconut milk, but the light um, option as opposed to full fat. But this is just the coconut milk that you get in a, a carton along with your soy milk and uh, almond milk. Let me make sure I'm thinking of everything. Yes, I am. And this one is by So Delicious. It's, um, anyway, only, 
I don't count calories um, because if you eat whole food, plant-based, lots of starches, lots of grains, uh, lots of vegetables, stay full all the time. Um, but if you eat that way, unless you're eating too much fat, unless I just go nuts on a nut butter or we always snack on some raw nuts at the end of the day to get our omega-3s, especially walnuts. Unless you overdo it with that, uh, you kind of have to work to keep the weight on, uh, which is kind of fun. So this calls for two cups of coconut milk, but the reason I mentioned it's 45 calories a cup, I'm using two cups, I may use a little more, that's nothing for the amount of servings that you have here. I'm gonna say this will serve four. Um, it could serve more, it could serve less. You know what, this is almost empty. Did you see what I just did? I took a, a, wine, bo a wine cork out of it. <laughs> this fell out of my refrigerator and the cap snapped off. I would have had this all over the floor except that there was a uh, you can almost see it in there, the a little foil membrane over it. And so thank goodness none of it spilled. Well, I just happened to put a wine cork in there, wine bottle cork, and it worked just fine. So that's it for the coconut milk. And look at this. So what's going to happen is even though I could heat this quickly and serve it right away, I'm gonna let this come to a boil, let it cook for 10 minutes. And you know what I did last time and I really liked it. I mashed, I wonder if I could do that, it's not, it's too hot. Well, I could do it later. I mashed against the side some of the garbanzo beans to give it a certain sort of a, a more, a thicker uh, consistency rather than all the beans being separate, it gave the broth a bit of a, um, more of a stew kind of a, uh, an outcome. And I liked that a lot. So I just mashed some of them and releasing that starch will allow that to happen. Okay, so I'm gonna cook it about 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna add a cup, or sorry, two cups. You know what, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to finish it and I'll just let it cook a little bit longer um, off camera. And the reason I said that is rather than starting the video again and uh, all of that, I'm just gonna show you what this looks like when it's ready to plate. Because when you're about to serve this, you bring it to a boil, stir in the spinach, and a quarter of a cup of cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, don't use it. You know, some of us are genetically um, sensitive, taste-wise, to cilantro. It tastes like um, soap to some people. It doesn't me. I, I adore it. Um, but, and, yeah, okay. Look at how beautiful this is. In just minutes... The spinach is going to, the spinach is going to uh, just wilt. As a matter of fact, what I just did, that was two cups of spinach. Almost always, for example, we had the black bean mushroom chili that's on my site, and you can see the uh, video of it. I served that last night to us and, or for dinner, and I added the same amount of spinach into our mushroom chili and you'd think that's really strange. A chili with spinach, well the spinach just breaks down and we've added that much more nourishment. Spinach is loaded with calcium. You wanna use a little lemon to help break that calcium down and make it more bioavailable. But almost always when I do any kind of beans, I'll squeeze a little lemon in the end or lime. And in this dish at the very end, I'll sprinkle over some cashews, and a squeeze of lime. 
Okay, just to show you what this looks like and how I would serve it, because it's not quite ready yet. Give it a little time, let it cook a little bit, hold off putting the spinach in, but this is how pretty this looks. The spinach will break down, but you're gonna get these colors. The fragrance is lovely because you have the, um, the Thai curry paste. You could use more of the curry paste. If you like, you could add a powdered curry, a little bit of powdered curry. You could add some turmeric to it. Um, depending on your own taste, you can, you can kick it up a little. If you really want some salt and pepper, you can do that. I keep the salt to a minimum, but I do use some. Oh, that looks so good. And then we'll sprinkle over it some toasted cashews. I just had cashew pieces that I toasted in a dry pan. I'm gonna sprinkle a tiny bit more of cilantro on it. And look, bon appetit. Easy, quick, inexpensive, and highly nourishing. We're going to have this for dinner tonight. I hope you're gonna enjoy what you're having for dinner tonight. And I appreciate your coming on. Thank you. Bye.